Let's cross now to the US Ambassador to New Zealand, Scott Brown. Good evening, Ambassador. Give us your reckons. How is it looking for President Trump at this point? Well, I, I was listening to the previous uh, speaker, and apparently, it, I guess it's all over. You thought there were, she uh, thought there was going to be this massive landslide, and I never thought that. I thought it would be very close. Uh, once again, the political pollsters are wrong. Uh, I believe it's going to come down to probably Pennsylvania, and you won't get the result for uh, definitely not today. Uh, the president just won Florida, and uh, is doing well. There's no surprises. I'm really following the Senate. Uh, right now in some of the House seats, and I think uh, the Senate is actually going to be held by the Republicans as well, as of right now. So you remain confident that President Trump will be a second-term president? Well, I'm, listen, it's not over till it's over. I've run 21 races, I'm 19 and 2, and I don't ever, ever celebrate until every vote is counted. What I am really ecstatic about is the fact that uh, when you're talking about a divisive country, I actually respectfully disagree. I think we have an amazing country where every voter is engaged. The voter, voting levels are off the top incredible, and that's a fantastic testament to people wanting to get engaged and do it through a lawful process. Yeah, we're having some people that are upset. Yeah, we're having some violence that's been hijacked from the George Floyd killing and, and taking it to a direction that it shouldn't be, absolutely. Uh, but all in all, in the majority, 99% of the country, things are going normally, and that's a great thing for democracy. Because looking at it from here in New Zealand, it would appear that you don't have some violence that you have had during the course of this year. Reasonably significant widespread civil unrest and dissatisfaction with your, at the very least, law enforcement. Well, respectfully, when George Floyd died, you, you guys also had protests. It was actually about the crown and the treatment of the Maori. And you look at every parts of uh, the world, they were having protests on racial inequality and police uh, brutality or, or, or the way the police are treating people. I think that's a great conversation to have. But to defund the police outright? No, that's ridiculous. To do a top to bottom review of the police? Absolutely. That's a normal thing that any country or any city or town or state should do. Uh, and, and you're saying lawlessness everywhere? Respectfully, that's not true. There's about five or six places in our country that are definitely having some problems. And that comes from leadership, whether it's from the mayors and the governors of those individual states that need to take control. And if they can't handle it, then they can ask for the, uh, the federal government's help, as they did uh, in California uh, during the Rodney King uh, riots. Ambassador, can you explain to me why a special fence has been put up outside the White House then? Well, obviously, you have to be, you know, take precautions. There's been uh, protests before in our country's history. It is the people's house. Uh, I think it's common sense. It doesn't surprise me. It's been done in other times in our history. So what are you preparing for? Well, I'm here with you, so I'm preparing to go As to Auckland and get on TV tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, listen, of course, yeah, he's, the, he's the leader of the free world. He has to be safe and secure. That's where he and his family live. And to not prepare, I think, would be really, uh, uh, really just uh, inappropriate. And I think it's appropriate as they, pr pr as they protect 10 Downing Street and obviously, uh, you know, uh, iconic places in England. Uh, we, we would do it here if there was a problem, certainly. I'm presuming you guys would do it. It's just common sense precautions. Uh, is it, is it uh, something I'm proud of that we're boarding up our stores? No, absolutely not. But uh, you have an element that's hijacked the, the absolute correct protesting for George Floyd's death and have taken it to create havoc around the country to uh, create problems for people. And they're killing and maiming and destroying businesses of innocent people. And it's wrong. And it needs to be addressed. A number of commentators have raised the fact that President Trump remains in the White House this evening and has set up what's been called as a sort of an election war room and that this is out of the ordinary, that elections shouldn't be, well, he shouldn't be using the Oval Office like that on the election night. Should he be somewhere else? I mean, why has he set up his, his camp, his headquarters there on this day? Well, well, first of all, he lives there, and I don't think it's unusual. I have no objections to it. Where, where would you like him to go? Uh, the local hotel somewhere? I mean, he's the president of the United States, and he has the right to have campaign uh, set up there to find out the results, monitoring the results, just like every other person around. Uh, he's not going to do it in, a, in his home uh, down in Florida, certainly. He's going to do it in the White House, where the action is. Uh, I don't see anything unusual about that. Uh, I want him to be in the White House in case he has to make any uh, dis decisions or, or issues uh, with regard to any potential violence.
You talked about voter engagement and obviously there was a huge number of people who voted early. Do you have any concerns about voter suppression because a lot have been raised? Do you have any worries about that? Well, how do you have voter suppression when we've probably voted the most we've ever voted in our country's history? And almost every state is off the charts, uh, out of sight, incredible. I'm actually very excited about the amount of engagement with our country. Uh, so I have to, once again, respectfully disagree. With, so it doesn't concern you have, the level of, well, no, legal action and challenges, our, like, for example, around the counting of ballots, whether they should be counted three days afterwards, a week after, whether they should be disallowed, the, the so-called um, well, naked envelopes with people sending in their ballots would would not. If you if yeah, your listen, aim is to get full participation, would you sure. not lower the barriers? No, actually, I think uh, respectfully, every state. The problem is, and I've already on record on this, is that we have almost 50 independent New Zealands. Picture it, and every every New Zealand, every state is an independent country, and they can make their own election laws. And the, you know, so you're open eight to eight. Uh, and any ballot that comes in after the postmark of that date won't be counted. They have that right to make that decision. Now, uh, the issue that you're referring to is a lot of states in the middle of a pandemic with no notice whatsoever and based on other political means potentially have changed those roles in the middle of the race. And that's what the problem is with, with a lot of the, the objections. And respectfully, there were objections in the last election. There were objections in the prior one. Don't forget, in 2000, you had uh, George Bush and Al Gore went down to Florida. They had legal teams, went all the way to the Supreme Court. So that's the beauty of it. It's all transparent. It's out there for everyone to see and, and criticize and praise and, and, and question. But you know, ultimately, we have a check and balance that has worked in our country's history, and I anticipate will work again. Ambassador, regardless of the result, what are you expecting in the next few days? Uh, in terms of the country, I think everyone's just going to you know, hang out and wait. I'm hopeful that they will because there's, nothing's been decided yet. I said on record, uh, I'm not surprised it's close. I'm, I, I thought the political pollsters would once again be wrong, uh, and they were. They said that Joe Biden had a 10-point lead nationwide and he was going to be a blue wave. I, I never thought that. I thought it would come down as usual, as it has last time, uh, to one or two states. And that's the nature of the Electoral College. That's the nature of uh, our, our process. Now, right now, the president's leading in the popular vote. Wouldn't it be something? And I'd love to hear some of the political commentators say, what if the president wins the popular vote and loses the Electoral College? And you got, is everyone going to still have problems with the Electoral College? No. You know? So it, it, we'll see what happens. People need to be a little bit patient. And just note that, you know, listen, democracy's messy. Our founding fathers knew that. And they, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Thank you for joining us. That is the U.S. Ambassador to New Zealand, Scott Brown.